You're listening to the Naptime Empires podcast with my mom, Nikki Ellidge Brown. Mom, your show's on. Thanks, bud. I got it from here. Welcome to the Naptime Empires podcast, refreshingly honest conversations on the realities of parenthood and entrepreneurship. I'm your host, Nikki Ellidge Brown. Let's get started. Context matters. And before I can actually update you on book progress, I got to catch you up to speed on where we're starting from, how we got to this current moment, current draft. So in this episode, I'm going to share with you an overview of my personal writing, drafting, revising process to date, which includes, but it's not limited to how and why I chose Naptime Empires as my first book when I have a squillion other ideas circulating in here, what prompted the first draft last year, April 2020, the exact process, I mean, in the weeds that I used to go from zero to 94,000 words in 12 days, why I stopped working on it for months after that, what got me back into the editing saddle, the perks of not meeting my original goal published date, how working on my book has actually been a boost to my physical health, and also some ideas for future episodes, which you can share your vote and any questions you want me to expand on via naptimeempires.com slash combo. If you have no plans to write a book, this may not be your favorite episode because it is very housekeeping-y and in the weeds, play-by-play. But if you do want to write a book or you've already written a book, my hope is that hearing my takeaways from my own messy process will help give you ideas and our confidence because it's entirely possible that you've already got your author is together and hearing my journey helps you feel better about yourself. <laughs> so either way, it's a win in my book. Let's get going. All right. You might hear Noe in the background. She's downstairs and we have a very open floor plan. I'm currently in the room, the recording studio of this house, which is her room that she has yet to sleep in. She's on my statements old. So there's that. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about the process and the backstory just so that you're up to speed for all future updates. This is like the audio pull to refresh in terms of where we are. I've wanted to write a book forever, talked about that in the last episode. So the first step in the process was to have that desire planted on my young heart and then talk about it for years and years and years and years and years and years. I've hired help over the years from, I mean, at least in terms of programs and agencies and even book writing coaches, at least five over the years. It just wasn't time. It wasn't time. Although I got some great Google Docs notes, inspiration, and ideas. You can check out the season premiere of season three on her terms for more detail on what finally sparked this season into motion. But really to me, it came down to the human Pomodoro timer. So I have an episode somewhere here in the podcast on the magic of the micro hustle, which is really just about setting a timer and doing the thing to give yourself a container so that it doesn't feel like, oh my gosh, it's going to take forever. It's really all about setting your pace, right? And letting yourself set that self-imposed timeline to get your booty in gear when you really want to make progress and meaning build meaningful momentum on something. So Noe, my daughter, was that. For me. So when I learned I was pregnant in January 2020 for the third time in a year, also detailed in, I think it's episode 63, um, I decided to leverage and use that pregnancy energy and creative mode and the quarantine really, because I felt to me total privilege that I was able to stay at home, that I wasn't you know, largely my lifestyle was not largely affected by quarantine for the most part, besides having my boys home from school. But it was like, oh, I feel like this is an opportunity. Like I saw it as an opportunity to just get in there and be super creative, especially about while being pregnant and leverage her as my human Pomodoro timer, you know, like thing she was due in September. And I thought, okay, this is my time. I have no idea how I'm going to feel once she's here once she's born, am I going to want to create? Am I going to want to just chill? Am I going to want to ramp up? Am I going to want to step back? And I knew enough going into my third round of having another little one. I knew enough to know that I can't predict that, you know? So I was like, let me take advantage of the time, energy, and focus that I've got. So in April 2020, I hired some support uh, via 
author cooties containers of other people that were writing books and as self-publishing support in terms of editing and all of that. And I let my family know I'm really going to just go for it. You know, I was trying to set a timeline and work backwards if I was going to self-publish before Noe got here in September, then I was aiming for August. And I knew if I needed to aim for August, then I needed to get the manuscript done in April. Okay. So I let the family know and listed their support, Jeremy specifically, to help be on deck with the boys. Also Minecraft. (laughs) I joke that 2020 was sponsored by Minecraft in our home. Okay. So let the family know. And then I set up a lot of co-working dates with my buddy Jada. And I think I might've done, or if I haven't done an episode on it, I alluded to it in the micro hustle, but I get so much work done in co-working dates, specifically with Jada. She's my go-to co-working buddy. And I say that she's like the fairy godmother of this book because she would babysit me (laughs) and be like, okay, time to focus. And so, and we still do it. I actually was writing with her today. We were working on our books together today. Um, So spoiler alert, right? The book's not done. That's why we have book mode. This is the documenting the journey from here. So this wasn't happening, but I mean, it wasn't finished. The spoiler alert is that I didn't meet that original timeline. We'll get to that in a second. But the setup was I would go into my office here in this home. I do actually have an office with doors. They're glass. So, you know, they don't really do much besides just their ornamental energetic boundaries. But you can definitely unlock them. Unlock the door with a pirate sword. Ask me how I know. So they're the suggestion. The doors are a suggestion, but either way, I had my own office space. Um, Hang on just a second. My screen just went black and now I have to unlock it. Do you hear Noe in the background, by the way? Yeah. Okay. That's a lot lot like what it was like working where you can hear them on the other side. Okay. So I had an inspiring audio track just to help set the scene and kind of get in book mode. I've also used brain.fm before where they have like binaural beats that you could listen to, whether you're working for focus or productivity, creativity, that kind of thing. So I have this audio track that I listen to that helps get me in the zone and I have my blue light blocker glasses and that would be part of the scene. I also had like an orange scented lip balm I haven't been using that lately. Okay, but either way, I had I was setting the scene, right, to build kind of a habit and a ritual around it. So over the years, like I said, I had kind of started and stopped and started and stopped with Naptime Empires and also with other books. And really it was a conversation in 2019 with some of my homeroomies that were in my small group, ongoing mastermindy co-working situation called Homeroom. And so special shout out to you, to Bobby and Claire, for being like, what if Naptime Empires just was the first book? We had a really great conversation in January of 2019 just around all these other book ideas that I had. And they were like, well, what if this may be too simple, but what if Naptime Empires came first? And that's when I realized if I didn't document it now, I probably wouldn't circle back to it because I'm only getting further away. Now, this was before Noe was on the scene. So we did just kind of restart our Naptime Empires status. But the whole idea was that if I don't document it now, when would I document it? And I feel like it deserves to be documented because Naptime Empires, that season of life, again, even though we just kind of restarted it, was really special. You know, the years of me starting my business and Jeremy was gone and then Deacon came in and ushered the conversation. It's a really special season of life that I would love to document for myself, for my kiddos, just so they can kind of have more insight into who we were and what our life was like at the time, what they inspired me to do and the roles that they played. And then also to document it for anybody else who's on the journey, just wondering how is so-and-so making it work? You know, again, that's the whole inspiration of of the podcast and now the book. So anyway, that's the background of how I decided to let Naptime Empires be the first. I feel like Naptime Empires is the first book, kind of like I had to create a course about copy in order to have experience building a business with a little one in tow. I feel like I need to write Naptime Empires and go through this experience of fully owning my author piece of my identity to be able to move on really to my full hashtag on her terms chapter of life. So there's context on why Naptime Empires was first. Cause I'm like, I feel like I'm pregnant, like a cat pregnant with quadruplets. <laughs> I don't know who's coming out first. And that makes it really confusing if you're trying to draft and figure out how to organize a book, but you have multiple books and ideas and messages in mind. So it really helped a lot to just decide to kill off all the other options. I know that's intense, but that's what side 
that root word means, killing off all the other options, letting Naptime Empires be first. So I had multiple brain sneezes in the forms of note cards, podcast episodes, note cards about podcast episodes, you know, like at some point, I think I even posted on my Instagram where I had just written down all the names of the solo episodes that I had been inspired to record for the podcast. And I just put colorful markers, stuck them on note cards. And I was like, oh, okay. These could be chapters. These could be ideas. I also went through the Naptime Empires survey that I had done years ago. I've actually done a couple of them over the years where I just invited you to share your story with me and questions and challenges and frustrations and what makes it worth it to you and all of that. So I would just dive into those spreadsheets and look for ideas and questions that resonated with me and my experience and things that I felt like, yeah, that feels inspiring and worth speaking to and documenting. So I made a spreadsheet of, and I had different tabs based on the topic. Is it more business stuff, family stuff, personal stuff, et cetera. And then, so yeah, I had multiple brain sneezes. So then I went through one night and just consolidated them. I think it was a night. I'm foggy now, but I consolidated all, these are all the topics in no particular order that I would want to write about. And then I organized that doc a little bit more into sections and then I wrote all of the finalists at that point in on post-it notes. And then I put the post is it because I wanted to bring it back into the physical. And so then I put the post-it notes in the sections and then kind of ordered them up. And then I retyped once I kind of had an order that I liked and I could see these are this is kind of the the parts of the book. Okay, cool. These are all the sections or things that the topics that I'd want to cover in these parts of the book. Once I had that all sorted on post-its, then I typed it back up and made that like an initial outline. So we had graduated from brain sneeze to outline, but it, you know, took some going back from virtual to physical, virtual to physical. Okay. So once I had the outline and I had, these are the topics, then I made it into points, like actual bullet points for each topic. And then once I had that bullet point outline, I made a document for each one. So I actually made one folder in my Google Drive, like, okay, this is the, this is the, the draft, the first draft. And then I had a doc for each section, you know? So each doc basically had a topic and then the bullet points from that main outline. So I had a document for each one and I numbered them so that they'd be in the order still, you know, like in the Google Drive, I numbered them. And then as I was writing and fleshing out that doc into a draft of that chapter or section, I would put little asterisks. That way, whenever I was looking at it in the Google Drive, I could easily see at a glance that one's been fleshed out. This one has not. This one's been fleshed out. This one has not. Okay. So went from ideas in my head to brain sneezes, tissues all over the place, some in note card form, some in Google Sheet form, some in Google Doc form. And then I consolidated them into the one doc. Then I put them in the post-its to kind of reorder physically, typed them back up, added the bullet points to flesh it out made a document for each one. And this may not work for anyone but me. I'm just sharing it in case it shakes an idea loose for you that's of some value. And then because I was working with a timeline of really trying to finish it in April so that I could hot potato it over to the editing team and then try to keep this timeline for August, I was really inspired to do that. I was like extremely driven. I want this book out before she comes. And so I was like, whatever I need to do to get this done in April. So in order to do that, I needed to set the pace for myself. And like, okay, if I have this many days and I have this many docs, then I need to do, for example, four docs a day. I think that's what it ultimately came out to. That was my goal was to get four docs fleshed out per day in draft mode. So I had to set the pace for myself so that I wasn't overwhelmed because I had no idea how long is it going to take me. I can type really fast. Thank you, AOL Instant Messenger, as I was coming of age in sixth grade, <laughs> middle school. So I can type really fast. I mean, if I'm just free writing and typing with my fingers, it could be like thousands of words in 25 minutes or something. I mean, I think that's pretty fast. I don't know the exact how fast it is, but it is pretty fast. Um, so matching my word nerdery with my finger keyboarding skills I can write really fast, but this is, there's a little more thought 
involved as much as I want to like get out of my head and let the book come through me, blah, blah, blah. I'm thinking as I'm writing sometimes too. Okay. So setting the pace and figuring out about how long it would take me. And then I would write down my goals of, okay, if I'm going to do four docs a day, then these are the four docs that I would need to do today. And I would write them out physically. I printed out that outline that showed these are the topics that I'm going to be writing on for each of the three main sections. And then, so I printed it out and had a physical copy. And then I would write down, these are the docs that I'm working on today on what I call my magic dry erase board, because it was just really fun to just write out, here's what I'm doing. Bam, bam, bam. Like Pac-Man, like take that, take that, take that. And I would just write the write out, these are the four things I'm going to do. And then I get my booty in the seat. And it was about a 12 day. Yeah, it was 12 days. I was planning for two weeks, but I gave myself two weeks. It took about 12 days and I would write for up to 10 hours a day. I was pregnant. So obviously she wasn't born yet. I wasn't nursing. At this point, I have nursing breaks. She brings me back into the physical because like, you know, baby girl's got to eat. Um, but at the time I could just go for it. And then I would come out for lunch and the boys were building a clubhouse and, you know, watching Descendants. That was like our theme song in the early quarantine. We find, we're a little late to the Descendants party on Disney Channel. Um, anyway, so they were having a grand old time in quarantine doing whatever. And then I was in there writing. So we ended up getting there at that pace with that process, with my docs, writing it down, checking it off as I went physically on the paper, adding the little asterisks to each doc as I finished it, and then checking it off on my dry erase board. Then I would be like, okay, you four docs, you know, you four topics, you're on deck for tomorrow. And I just went for it. And it was intense, but it felt really inspiring. I can only describe it as like, I mean, it was, it was just a really beautiful thing because showing up for the dream that you talk about and have talked about for years and years and years just feels good because it's you actually being who you were, who you came here to be. So of course, biology, energy, everything wants to support you being the person that you came here to be. So I just felt really great. And then I finished and I passed it and I was passing it over to the team that was going to help and then realized I needed to go back through it. And that we weren't actually going to be able to meet the timeline that I originally had set. And it was like, the wind just went out of my sails. And it was almost like, like a layer of, or a level of grief. And that might sound ridiculous, but I was just so inspired by the idea of getting it out in time that then when I realized, oh shoot, it's actually not ready to pass to an editor yet. Like I do need to actually go through it a little bit more before I can do that. It just kind of knocked me out and I was like, oh great. Well then what's, what's the point, you know? And there was a lot to the point because the exercise of me getting all those words out was really helpful and valuable. And there's no way around it. You got to get words on the page so that you have something to edit. So it was like, it was huge. And yet it still needed a, some work for me to go back through it. And I was like, dang it. It's kind of like how nobody could really declutter my Google Drive because they wouldn't necessarily know why did I keep that screenshot or whatever. It's like, oh, or in my case, being biologically, physically pregnant, like nobody's going to be able to deliver this baby but me. You know, there's no way out. It's a similar, again, I'm not comparing writing a book to having a baby, but I am in this very one specific sense of the fact that like nobody could do the pushing for me. That had to be me. And so that was the realization was like, oh, okay, nobody can do that. I could get an epidural, but like I got to do this part myself. Okay. So... I sat on the draft. It was like such a thrill to have it done. And then I just kind of ignored it for a little while and let it sit, let it sit, let it sit. I ended up reorganizing it. I ended up saying, look, I just need somebody to, it's kind of like somebody just take this baby. Like I've tried everything I could do. Somebody please just look, sit, tell me, is this anywhere close to a manuscript? Does this count? Like, am I, do I even know what I'm doing at all? Can somebody just please look at it? So thank you, Rochelle, for looking at it in June and giving me some feedback. I got some feedback from Rochelle, my developmental editor, and let it sit then. And then eventually I went through 
and went through to check out her notes and then incorporate her notes and see what was resonating with me and what wasn't resonating with me. And I tried not to should all over myself because I really just wanted to enjoy our last summer as a family of four. And I've talked about that in previous episodes too, around trusting the timing. I think that could be a whole solo episode in itself. But I did go through that round at some point over the summer and then I let it sit again. And then it was September really when Noe was almost here that I was like, okay, I've done all the nesting I can do, like things that she's not even going to be wearing for months and months are already washed. You know, like literally every little nesting thing that I could do was done. And I think I talked about this in the September episode where it was like, I feel like she's just playing chicken with me and waiting for me to get through this next round of edits before she comes. Like maybe my way to induce labor is to actually finish this round of drafting the manuscript. And I was saying that and joking about it. And you know that gross saying about eating the frog? There's that book that was big in the corporate world about eating the frog, like doing your most valuable task first or whatever, right? First thing in the morning. And so I was, I had literally had that conversation with one of my buddies and I kid you not, we had a very weird experience outside in our front yard. It was very National Geographic where we heard this weird sound that we thought was a squirrel in a nest in a tree. And it ended up being a frog that was literally being captured by a snake. I want to say that the frog ended up getting away. I don't know. But the snake was trying to get it by the foot. And it was really gross. Hashtag circle of life. I understand that's just how it goes. But it was like, I literally felt it was one of those knock over the head universal jokes, practical jokes kind of thing that I had just been using the expression about eating the frog, like just doing it, letting this be the thing before I have this baby, blah, blah, blah. And then there was a literal snake that was trying to eat the frog in our front yard. It was intense. It was intense, but I couldn't deny it. So I got my booty in the seat. Oh, I forgot to tell you another thing was that I played with a totally different outline over the summer. And then I ended up going back to the original outline because I was like, nope, it was, again, another frog analogy. You got to kiss a lot of frogs. Sometimes you got to try a lot of different outlines to know which one is the right one for you. And so I did end up going back to my original outline. I don't want to tell you too much about it because I don't want to spoil it. Maybe I'll get over that and tell you all about the book before it's actually out later on. But for now, I don't want to spoil it. So I ended up going back to the original outline And this time I had more confidence with it because I had experimented with another outline that just wasn't hitting for me. It just wasn't resonating. I was able to narrow it down. At this point, I paid to have a physical copy of it bound and printed at our local printer slash FedEx so that I could just make it real because I just don't love working in Google Docs. It's like I get Google Doc vertigo. I get dizzy. You know, it's like, where am I? If there's 168 stinking pages in one Google Doc, that's overwhelming. So having the physical copy bound and printed was really helpful. And then I literally went through each section with a pen. I have three main sections of the book and I would just flip through with a pen. And that was actually just fun because I like doodling. I like doing physical pen and paper stuff. So I would go through it with a pen. And then as I had changes, I would go back to the Google Doc for each section, update, type it in, which you could, you can have somebody else do for you, I guess at some point, but I'm all in it. I was all in the weeds. And then I would save a copy. I forgot to mention that. I would save a copy to my hard drive, but also to Dropbox just in case. You never know. And then, yeah. that. And then so I did. I made it through that round of edits and updates before Noe got here. And then after that, I had another round that I was doing of line edits, which I gave myself permission to just focus on the baby bubble and my fourth trimester. And I worked on it a little bit, but not too much. I think it was around New Year's that I finally did that. And then I printed it out again to do the next draft, thinking that I was going to be done with it after the line edits. And then I realized, oh no, this won't do. I actually would like to go through it in in much more detail. You know, it's the weird thing to me about the book thing. And I've heard this from friends that are doing traditional or have done traditional publishing as well, is that you make it through and then you're like, oh, y'all are just going to let that go through. Like to me, I'm reading through, I'm walking around. At this point, I actually started doing walking edits where I literally have the physical copy with a pencil or a highlighter or whatever. And I'm marking stuff, but I'm like walking around the house 
getting steps in inside, just making laps around the kitchen island and around the living room and whatever. And I would be like, snorebore, that's a snooze. I can't believe, like, that sounds really boring. I'm just paraphrasing, like, this is a book report and there's no story here, like, that couldn't be Googled and stuff. And so I was going through it thinking, oh, I actually want to change a lot more. But the tricky thing is nobody can know that when you're the author, like, they're, the editors are trusting that you're saying what you want to say and they're not going to be like, why would you say that? Unless it really doesn't make sense, you know? And so that was one thing so far that's been surprising to me because I'm like, oh, I could just publish this. I mean, no one's stopping me, especially with self-publishing. I could just publish this as it is and it would be fine. It would be okay, but it wouldn't be exactly, and here's the deal. It's never going to be exactly what I want it to be, right? But it'll be exactly what it needs to be. So anyway, all that to say, I was so close like when you're at line edits, then you're ready to pass it in theory to go do copy editing and like proofreading and that kind of thing. But I was just like, no, there's some more substantive changes that I want to make. And I got to sit down and, and figure out when I'm going to do that. So anyway, I printed it out again. I made some edits and then I printed it out again recently before we went camping, but I totally didn't touch it. And for me, what I was doing while we were camping, working on the book was by listening back to call replays that are like those dear diary moments and time and snapshots of my first few years in business. Most of them are recordings that I had with Michelle Simmons, who I love, EFT practitioner and intuitive. And I just have so many calls recorded of our time together. And that was fun. It was like time travel, just getting back in touch with my original Naptime Empires mode. So even though it didn't seem like I was working on the book necessarily or literally on paper, just going back and revisiting those moments and those thoughts and those experiences and remembering what it was like when I was doing all this and solo parenting and all of that launch mode, feeling tired do I want to do this? Am I already tired of what I'm talking about? Like all of those things that are relevant stories and experiences that I want to infuse into this book. It was really sweet to go back and reconnect with those. Also with the perspective of what Naptime Empires Mode means to me in 2021, which is so very different than what it meant to me in 2013. So that's that's where we're at right now. I have a draft that's like 60,000 something words. I do have the written copy, but I also ended up breaking it into three different Google Docs. So each section has its own Google Doc, which makes it a lot more manageable. They're around 20-ish thousand words each. And that's where I'm at. That's where I'm working from right now. Um, <sighs> restyling the table of contents a bit more specifically this week and making some structural shifts, but nothing major. It's cool to know and see that like, I'm really solid on these are the parts. These are the sections within each part or the chapters mm -hmm. and to go from there. So that's where we're at today. It's almost the end of May, 2021. And that's now you're all, you're caught up to speed on my process. And I just wanted to share a few takeaways just in case they're helpful to you, just as I'm looking back in terms of what has been the most helpful to me. One is about setting the pace. If you are going to be in sprint mode and you do have a timeline, being able to make it real and make it measurable as opposed to this open-ended, I'm going to work on the book today. It's like, well, okay, about how long does it take you to write this much? Or if you've got a chunk written about how long does it take you and you can set 25 minute timers to track it about how many Pomodoros does it take you to revise or read it, even if you're just reading it. Cause that was the last thing I did actually last week. I forgot that. I just read through the whole thing and I did have a highlighter and I would note stuff like, Ooh, I definitely like this part. Definitely don't care about this part or any other ideas. So I was doing the whole walking edit, um, read through last week, just to remember what's in here, who's here, like taking attendance basically. Um, but setting a pace makes it really so much more inspiring and manageable rather than just open-ended. I don't know, I'm working on the book, I'm doing some editing, but like chunking it into smaller bits is helpful. And then also trusting your timing because I did enjoy that we had our sweet and slow summer last year and soaking up our family of four. And I enjoyed giving myself permission to just enjoy having Noe once she was here rather than feeling like, now I didn't get the book done before she was born. Now I got to finish it before the end of the year. Like, no, that was my 
first three months with her and she's it. She's our last baby. So I have no regrets of soaking that time, uh, soaking that time up and also just trusting my timing in terms of knowing that if I had written it before she got here, then I would be missing out on a layer of perspective that I have now that our nap time in Paris mode is refreshed. Another takeaway is the power of co-working. So if you know that this matters to you for real, for real, this is a goal that you actually care about. This is uh, something that you actually want to do and show up for, but you need a bit of help building the habit of getting your booty in the seat, then I can't rec- recommend highly enough to have a co-working buddy. Just like last year, I hired Kimberlyn, who's a friend or my friend now, but started off when I met her years ago as a personal trainer that I hired for a period of time. It was so helpful to me to have sessions with her as accountability to get my booty out of the seat and actually exercise and move and develop strength and feeling more energized in my own body. And now I work out on my own just because I want to, but it was so helpful to have Kimberlyn to help me set the habit back up and the practice. So likewise with Jada with the book. And then also the takeaway of printing when you're ready to edit. I mean, consider printing when you're ready to edit because one, it's a powerful visualization, not like it looks like the book. It is a book in a form, but it's, you know, it's physical and it can help you see things differently in a different light, literally. I told Jada, it's like, it's like in college when the lights would come on in the club and the truth is revealed. The truth is revealed in paper when it's right there in black and white and you can see it page by page as opposed to just one infinite scroll you've got a it's like a little come to Jesus moment there with what you've written okay so that's it that was longer than I expected so if you're actually listening all the way through this wow I want to know what is it that stood out to you. Are you working on your book? Like, why did you just listen to this whole thing? What was helpful? I would love to invite you to share anything you want me to go deeper on. Just go to naptimeempires.com slash convo or take a screenshot, share to IG stories over at Nikki Ellidge Brown. And then also I would like to say, if you would like help getting clear and started on a project or whether it's a book or any other project that's super meaningful to you right now and you're having a hard time organizing your thoughts and ideas or identifying what you actually really want and why, I would love to help with that. I do have some limited spots open for Voxer VIP days and a couple of ongoing one-on-one opportunities between now and our next big camping adventure. So you can go to workwithnikki.com if you want to apply and tell me more about that. And then I can keep you posted on openings for VIP days and such this summer. Okay. That's that. And oh, one more thing, just ideas that I have. If you're going to naptimeempires.com slash convo, you can make it like a multiple choice or fill in the blank. But I'm thinking about future topics for future episodes, like working with self-imposed deadlines as opposed to external or timelines, as opposed to external timelines, especially if you're self-publishing as opposed to traditionally publishing and how I'm navigating that in my mind to make my timelines real, even though they're coming internally. Uh, Writing and expression as a self-care practice. Why I chose to go self-published first as opposed to going for a traditional book deal first. The idea that nothing's missing and cracking the fantasy of thinking that this magical thing is going to happen once the book is done because that's actually going to keep you from doing it. So discussing that, how to handle when resistance strikes options for how to handle and what to do when resistance strikes, because it will. Um, On criticism, my first one-star review. Obviously, I haven't written it yet, so I'll tell you about that exercise and what I mean by that. And then again, the power of setting the pace and how to do that in more detail. So anyway, naptimeempires.com slash convo is the best way to reach me with your feedback and ideas for future episodes. But Otherwise, again, thank you for hanging out with me this whole time. It's really an honor. I know you have so many ways you could be spending your time and so many things that could be flowing through your earbuds. So I love and appreciate you. And I'm so grateful to be on the journey with you. And I look forward to catching up soon. Talk to you next time. This show may be over, but the conversation is just beginning. Head on over to naptimeempires.com slash Facebook so you can join my free... Wait, did I say free? 
I'm in Priceless, a rapidly growing community of Naptime Empire Builders for deeper discussions, behind the scenes scoop, and of course, updates whenever I've got new stuff coming up for you. NaptimeEmpires.com slash Facebook. See you there. See you next time. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Good job, buddy.